morning. It is day 17 of October. It's Sunday and it's chicken cleaning out day today. I'm just put all their feeders and things through the dishwasher. They go through the dishwasher, giving them a spray with their um, poultry feeder disinfectant stuff as well. So just drying that and I shall be refilling them and putting them back in their run, which has been raked, sanitized and everything. Somebody in the comments asked how often we clean out the chickens. We clean them out every Sunday because where we live, we're surrounded on all sides by neighbours and we live in quite close quarters. So we want to keep them fresh and clean. We don't want to let them get smelly. We don't want to let poo sit on the ground and so on. So we keep them regularly cleaned out. And they're all very happy on chicken cleaning out day because there's lots going on. We normally give the garden a bit of a rake and a tidy up, which turns over leaves and reveals bugs and lots of other delicious treats. Phoebe's behind me, you can probably just see her here. She's having her lunch and a bit of iPad time. And lots of fruit by the looks of it, very good. I'm gonna have my lunch once I finish sorting out these chickens and I'm gonna have fresh eggs as my reward for looking after the chickens. What else? We've had a very relaxed start. I've done some knitting, watched some YouTube. Dan's been watching the football and then the wrestling. He likes the wrestling. And um, I think we might get a takeaway tonight. Was that the plan or did I only think that in my head? You talked about getting a Chinese and I didn't disagree. We don't get takeaways often because, well, they're expensive and we're trying to save up for our, a possible kitchen extension. But we figured we don't do it often, maybe once a month. So we think we might get a Chinese tonight because nobody, I, I go through these phases of not liking food, not liking anything that we sort of regularly have as a meal. And I just, but I do, I fancy Chinese. And where we've, where we've all been a bit under the weather, I think you've got to go with what you fancy. So yeah, once I've done this, go have some lunch. And then Dan's gonna take Phoebe to the park because she's on the girls' football team at school. So they're gonna go, they're gonna cycle up to the park and have a bit of a practice. She plays in goal, which she loves. So he's just gonna teach her a few goalie moves. And at that point, I think I'm probably gonna run the hoover around and then hopefully sit down and do a bit of knitting on my shitty socks. And that is the plan for Sunday. Let's see where it goes. them a chicken perch now I know there's gonna be loads of people saying just put a stick in there and we have got sticks but we haven't got the perfect stick that will fit and stay put securely for them so I've treated them to a perch More treated hey, hey. Um, and I was just wanting to show you the instructions because they really made me laugh look this is the correct way to position your perch at head height this is the incorrect way too high confused looking chickens so they're getting their new perch today. sanitised but here is their new perch put it at an angle it's a bit of a faff 
but I'm hoping that they're going to like it. Actually, looking at it, I think that's too high up. And Dan's going to kill me. It's supposed to be head height, but I think that's too high. Did you hear the bird scare then? Right, I'm going to deal with this today. Not this. That's a story for another day. This. I should probably say that this is mosaic stuff. It was in the shed where we now keep all the chicken stuff. And I haven't done mosaics in years. So I put it to one side and said, right, I'll sort that out. And that was about two, two and a half months ago. Oh, sorry about that noise in the background. That's Dan Hi. having his lunch. So I'm going to sort this all out and work out what's worth keeping, what's not worth keeping, and then the stuff that I do want to keep for future mosaics. Can you keep the background ambient noise down? No, I'm having like... <laughs> um, I'll have to work out where I want to put them. I suspect I'll probably store them in my mum's garage. So I've got these terracotta pots that I'd obviously started to think about doing a mosaic on. So I've just got to decide whether to just put the pots into use or maybe finish the mosaic. Maybe that might be fun. It's time and space to do it though, isn't it? I've also got jars and jars of this um, glass mosaic tiles. You buy them online or at mosaic shops. They have a shiny edge and then a grooved edge um, for sort of the stick for putting the stick on. <laughs> That's not the right word, the glue. And some purpley colour. And then I've got jars with this, you know, the glass stuff that florists use. Little pebbly things, they're really nice in those eggs. Oh, and the, this is lovely. This would have been quite expensive. This is the Millefuri. I think that's how you say it. They're basically like, ooh, little glass. It's like, do you know when you get the Fimo where people make Fimo kind of canes and then cut them? It's like that, but with glass. They're so pretty. So things like this, I don't want to get rid of because I know that I will use those again in the future this is a broken pot oh and a little friend will return him to the garden although that might not be the best place for him at the moment he'll probably get eaten by the chickens might pop him down over the wall at the end so he has a chance of survival bless him hello little friend <clears throat> Yeah, so broken bits of pottery and things are brilliant in um, mosaics. So if I broke a precious bowl or mug or something, I quite often save it to live again in a mosaic project. But this is going to go into the garden so I can rescue the snail. Unlucky for some, a broken mirror. Brilliant for saving for mosaics. I'm definitely going to hold on to that. It'd be brilliant for part of a garden mosaic, which I'm planning to do, which I shall talk about shortly. So there's quite a bit in this box that is underwater. I'm just to double check whether they actually got any water in there. I don't think this one has. Blue glass. Oh dear, that one's right under. Ooh. There's a little bit of water in there, but it's not too bad. That one survived. And what that is, looks like a broken pot. I don't think the glue has survived. It's like discovering the wreckage of the Titanic. Look, treasure. 
Stop singing. This is all little bits I used to collect of broken jewellery and things to add as decoration. Right, let's get it out onto a towel. I'm beginning to wish I hadn't started this, but it needed to be done. Right, these are all my Titanic treasures. It's got to work out what I'm actually going to use and what I'm not. They're all broken jewellery, basically. Oh, it's so sparkly. I mean, that's been sitting in water for ages. It's not done too badly, has it? I think it would fare well in a mosaic. What do you reckon? Bit of a magpie. I like, I like sparkly things. Little umbrella. A little mosaic brooch in itself. Just imagine it just sitting as a little decoration on a sort of garden mirror mosaic or something. Oh, this is a weird angle. I'm sitting on the kitchen floor. This is such a mammoth task and it's really hard because the chickens are all over the stuff outside. They, they are dying to know what I'm doing. They don't understand at all. They think whatever it is has got to be to do with them. <laughs> this is the first ever mosaic I ever did. I'm not going to get rid of it. I think what I might do is uh, put it up in the garden somewhere. I'd have to seal it because it's just on MDF. And then I think this was the second one. I did this on a tile and it was a monochrome one. I was practicing doing like curves and straight lines as well. So that was my second ever one. And I found a couple of ones that were in progress. They got really wet. So the kind of the substrate that they were on. Cloud has just wandered into the kitchen as though that's the most normal thing in the world. Out you go. Out you go. Cloud, you're a chicken, not a cat. Right, she's been evicted. What do I say? These chickens. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple of bits that I'll show you. This is actually a mirror that I was at some point doing for Lilia. It's all, the mirror bit is all taped up. But the mirror's got so wet that I'm not going to be able to save it. And it's a shame because it's a really nice little mosaic, actually, where it would have ended up being. So that... There you go, but you can see here the water damage is just, it's not savable at all. It's just, it's even got a bit slimy mouldy on the back, which is a shame, but there's not a lot I can do about it. I'll take a photo of it, I can always do it again. It was on one of those Ikea, I don't know if you can still get them, little Ikea mirrors that are a few quid. They were perfect for doing mosaics. I made a few on these. And uh, this one was from before Phoebe was even born. You can already see the damage on the, the water damage. I am going to try and dry this one out. Um, I was doing it for Lilia when she was very, very small. I did it on a course. It's the it's based on the very hung, the hungry caterpillar. And um, I went on a two day course with Martin Cheek down in Broadstairs. And um, this is what I was working on when I was there and I didn't have time to finish it. Um, but I've always meant to sit and finish it and get that grouted and up somewhere. Yeah, I really need to do that. So I'm going to see if I can dry it out and maybe finish that one day. This is another really early one. I think it's a tray, a little round tray or chopping board and then the round mirror came from something else and then oh look there's my camera <laughs> um, and then I was just doing almost like a doodle mosaic around it so I've got all this bit that's in white needs to be filled in and then it all needs to be grouted and finished off so that's another quite early one 
Yeah, so I've got one of my mosaics on display in the house, in the bathroom, which I'll try to remember to show you later. And I've got a couple on, on display in the garden, which probably could do with a bit of TLC. They've been out there for so long. I've got quite an interesting story to share with you about mosaics. I, d I don't think, unfortunately, I've got photos that would go alongside it. I will ask my friend, Charlotte. I mentioned Charlotte the other day when I was talking about my gallery wall. So she used to run um, a kind of online support group for women who had chronic illness. That's how Charlotte and I met because um, we both had ulcerative colitis really bad and we were both pregnant. And we met and online in the days when you didn't really meet people online. And we became friends and we've been friends now for, I don't know, 16 years, 16, 17 years. And she lives in America now. And she was living in America when she started this support group. In the meantime, I was into mosaics and I had joined in with a charity thing where we all did a little tile size, like kind of like this size, um, tile mosaic design. And we sent it off and um, a mosaic artist put them all together in, in several huge mosaic panels which were put on display in a hospital I can't remember where in America somewhere in America and um, that was it that was part of this charity thing I just joined in with and it had been a couple of years before or around uh, or a year before and um, all of a sudden a picture popped up on this support group um, Facebook page of someone meeting uh, someone they'd made friends with in the support group for the first time at the hospital where she was staying and they'd had a photo taken and they were standing right in front of the mosaic in the hospital which included my mosaic panel. Um, I mean the odds of that happening in like the, the amount of things that had to come together in the universe for that coincidence to happen is amazing. So I did a mosaic panel as part of a charity thing. My friend starts a support group for people with chronic illness. Two people meet because of that group and they meet in the hospital where my mosaic, not, not just my mosaic that's part of that panel, but the one that was in that part of the hospital because there were several others and they chose to have their picture taken in front of that mosaic. Life's funny, isn't it? I used to get broken plates from charity shops that they would have been throwing out and then I used to cut and chisel round the motifs to use them in mosaics. I'm definitely keeping this, that's going to be brilliant as part of a mosaic. Got all these little bits cut out, love that pattern. It's a great way to use broken things and give them a new life. Look, that took about double the amount of time that I um, intended. So this is everything. Well, there's a bit there. And then there's these bits. And then there's the works in progress I showed you. So I think that these are all going to fit in one box. I've moved them all out, mainly out of the jars. Because the jars just add to the weight. They make things a bit awkward. And I've moved them all into these plastic tubs that we save whenever we get a takeaway. Um, so that'll be easier when I'm using it in the future. So I just need to get a sturdy box to put it all in. My mum said it's absolutely fine to store it in her garage. So we'll take it over in the week. Oh, I need a cup of tea now. I promised I would tell you about my um, planned mosaic project. 
Here is a toilet sitting outside the back door with a wicker pig. My battery went and I've no idea when, but I was in the middle of telling you that I have a toilet outside my back door with a wicker pig on top. Now the wicker pig has nothing to do with the mosaic. <laughs> it just happens to be there um, because I was tidying up earlier and I just popped in there as I was sweeping. But the reason I have an old toilet outside my back door is when we did our bathroom, which would have been about two years ago now, it was before the pandemic, just before the pandemic we did our bathroom and uh, I saved the old toilet for the sole purpose of making a mosaic um, planter or sort of just feature or bird bath or something of that kind in the garden. I'd seen it on Pinterest um, a few years before and I thought I'm going to do that one day. So I've got the toilet and it's been sitting there for all that time and as you've seen today I've got all the supplies I need to do it uh, but it is the kind of uh, project that you need to it will take a little while to do so and we don't have a garage or anywhere that I can work so it would need to maybe be in finer weather or maybe maybe I could set up in my mum's garage and just go over there for a week and just get it done I don't know it would be quite a big undertaking anyway that's my plan is to do that at some point soon so uh, that's the big mosaic project I wanted to mention. I mentioned I was going to show you the one I've got on display upstairs as well so I'll try and remember to do that but I've just been editing and I've realised that this whole vlog has just turned into the mosaic vlog. So uh, yeah I hope it's interesting that just to see something a little little bit different. I love my arty crafty things and you know as you know I love knitting and crochet and and drawing and and mosaic's just another extension of that creativity really and it's something I haven't done in a long time and actually I've really enjoyed sorting it all out today but I'm going to get all of those things put away into a box and uh, then we're going to order Chinese and I'm going to go and put on my comfy clothes and we're going to watch the Strictly Results show so it's not been as relaxed today as I thought it was going to be yeah it has been because everyone's just kind of been able to get on with their own thing with no pressure and yeah, it's been a lovely Sunday. I love Sundays. See you tomorrow. <laughs>